I want to talk to you today about God's agenda for 2050. There's a lot of men out there, very wicked men, a lot of organizations that have agendas for 2050, things that they want to make happen. Many people know about Agenda 2030, but 2050 would be the net zero thing. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, if you haven't heard about that, uh, net zero is not just an internet company that I one of my email addresses is netzero.net. <laughs> but uh, there is a net zero dealing with carbon emissions and all this other stuff. Um, some very radical plans there, which we will talk about. But what you have to realize is there's a specific time frame that's given for the end times in the Bible. Now, if you're lost and you don't understand about this, well, then this would be a good video for you to watch. If you're saved and you're kind of taking your eyes off of God's timeline here a little bit, then this video, this sermon is going to be to encourage you because we have a very promising future as Christians. If you're lost, your future is not looking very good at all. But let me show you what the Bible has to say about this timeline. Revelation chapter 9, we'll go there, begin there in the book of Revelation. What is the book of Revelation? Okay, I'm going to just speak to that just for a minute. If, again, if you don't understand the Bible, that's fine. You've come to the right place. I will explain the scriptures to you in ways that you won't get in church buildings because they're all about getting your money and your membership and everything else, and it's a social club. They will never say things that upset you and whatever. They're there to make you comfortable, tell you that you're a wonderful person and everything else and the world's a wonderful place to live. If you have any sense, you know better than that on both accounts. <laughs> but uh, what's going on here? The book of Revelation is Jesus Christ revealing himself to man. It's when God says, okay, no more mystery. No, no more wondering if the world evolved or did the world come from the, you know, the back of the giant sea turtle or something, or was it some kind of a um, Allah created or whatever. The mystery will be over. God is going to reveal himself, revelation to man, right? There is coming a point in time in the future when there will be no more questions about whether there's a God or whatever. That's what the book of Revelation is about. And he's going to do things that are so miraculous and so amazing that there will be no question anymore. And a lot of it pertains to the destruction of this world and the present political system and everything else. And um, <clears throat> people know about it. There are people in positions of power that can see some of this stuff coming and they're worried about that and so they're trying to come up with their own agendas and and things like this and ironically a lot of their agendas tie in with what the Bible says would happen in the end times leading a lot of people to falsely assume that because uh, the globalist agendas line up with what the Bible says in the book of Revelation well then the globalists must have written the book of Revelation no, um, God is in control of everyone. By him, all things consist, the scriptures say. Uh, you have no life if God decides that you don't have life. You drop dead instantly when God says, okay, your time is up. Uh, the Bible talks about a rich man that the Lord said to him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. This night, boom, tonight you die. And that's what the situation is in reality but is there a specific time that god has this out or is it just kind of uh, when i feel like it there's a very specific time let me show you revelation chapter 19 verse 13 through 15 and the sixth angel sounded and i heard a voice from the horn four horns of the golden altar which is before god saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared, look at this, for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. That's going to be a lot of people that die. One third of all men will die at this judgment right here. But notice what it says there. Prepared for an hour. We're down to the hour. Day, month, and year. Does God have a specific time frame? Does he have a specific schedule that things are on? Yes, he absolutely does. And we're not going to go there in this study, but if you study Matthew chapter 24, there's a prophecy of a fig tree being reborn. 
the fig tree in Scripture is symbolic of the nation of Israel. And there was a prophecy saying that this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Now that generation was born in 1948. That's when the fig tree came back. The nation of Israel was recognized as an official nation again. And they came back in unbelief, by the way, too. A lot of people say, well, it's not really the nation of Israel over there in Israel. Um, they're not really the Jewish people and things because they reject Jesus Christ. Uh, they're supposed to reject Jesus Christ according to the prophecies of Scripture. That's the whole point of the book of Revelation being poured out, primarily centered over there in Israel and in the city of Jerusalem. You see a lot of that throughout the book of Revelation. The Jews require a sign. Again, understand the Scriptures. If you are new to this, there's a whole lot of things that you need to, to study and have explained to you. All right, it's a very complicated book. This book took thousands of years uh, to write uh, through many different people, God working through many different people. Um, and there were wars fought over this book. A lot of people died so that we could have this book in our hands. Don't think that you're going to read it and have it in a couple days. Uh, this book takes a lifetime to read and to understand and, and things, and you'll never master it, ever. Especially the book of Revelation, because a lot of this stuff has been sealed until the end times. Um, but please understand, this is not some kind of a thing where God's just willy-nilly, just, I don't know, I'm not really in control of anything. God has it planned down to the very year, month, day, and hour that this event is going to happen. He knows exactly when it's going to happen. God is not in heaven worrying about, oh, I didn't think the World Economic Forum would do that. And, oh, the Jesuits, they just did this thing here. And, oh, no, and the Freemasons and... That Bilderberger meeting, I didn't know that they were planning that. <laughs> no, God knows exactly what's going to happen. Israel is going to become a nation again. This generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. 1948. It cannot go beyond 2048. So God's agenda for 2050, um, we will be through, I believe, the book of Revelation uh, in terms of most of the events there, um, where a lot of the bad stuff is happening, I believe that we're going to be through that by 2050 and into the Millennial Kingdom. Give you a few reasons why as we continue. Revelation chapter 20, speaking of the Millennial Kingdom. Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. In other words, two different titles for the same being. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It's not that they're living and reigning and Jesus shows up at the end. That's post-millennialism. All right, well, it's not that there isn't really a millennial kingdom. It's just sort of the kingdom's here now. That's amillennialism. No, premillennialism pre is Jesus shows up at the beginning and those people that made it through and were faithful to him they live with him for the thousand years. He's on the earth, in other words. Okay, it's very important to understand that. A lot of deception out there with this whole uh, post-millennial and amillennial system. Verse 5, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, I'm not going to go off on a big study of the Millennial Kingdom because I've already done that, a two-part study. I'm, I'm going to give links at the end of this video so that you can continue your studies, your research on that. Uh, went through all the scriptures, okay? That's a very neat thing, but basically we're going to go to uh, some of the uh, scriptures here in just a, a minute or two. But basically what happens is there's a time of Jacob's trouble. Right now we are in what many call the church age. It's an okay term. Um, there's 
Church just means called out assembly. There's, you know, people who are called out assembly in the past and in the Old Testament and called out assembly type people in the future. But the specific church, the body of Christ, be more accurate to say the body of Christ age, if you really want to be technical, that's the time period, period where we're at right now. It began, Jesus dies on the cross, he's buried, rises again, the third day according to the scriptures, it begins, boom. It goes through the book of Acts, and then it goes forward to the time of the catching up of the body of Christ. That time comes, body of Christ goes up, the Antichrist is released on the earth. That begins, he signs the, he confirms the covenant with Israel and the Catholic Church. It's not Israel and the Muslims, that's nonsense. It's a lot of guys have taught that, that's false. He confirms the covenant with Israel and the Catholic Church. Boom, starts the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that lasts for seven years. After that time period, the day of the Lord begins with God's judgment, and then it goes into that thousand year reign of Jesus Christ physically on the earth. And in that time period, it's going to be an amazing time, uh, just wonderful. And if you're a Christian today in the body of Christ age, just like I said, to be more accurate, if you're a Christian today, um, and I'm not trying to say we have to rewrite anything that ever said church age and they were heretics. No, I'm just saying church age is fine, but body of Christ age would be better. If you're a Christian today and you suffer and you work for the Lord and you do things for the Lord and he counts you faithful, you will rule and reign with him for that thousand years. Okay, he will give you some inheritance there and he'll say, okay, you, I want you to take over this area here. You're basically going to be a politician, kings and priests. Uh, either a politician or somebody that's teaching the people that are, are there in the thousand-year kingdom, you'll be teaching them the Word of God. So, um, like I said, again, watch the study on the Millennial Kingdom, parts one and two, and you can get all the scriptures and everything else there. So, won't cost you anything but your time. Okay? Very important to get that. But this time period that's coming, we need to think about this. And this isn't some kind of a thing where it's just sort of a, yeah, someday, way out there in the future, someday, it's just, you know, I don't know when, it might be another thousand years, we don't know. It's not going to be another thousand years. Okay, there's no way that it's another thousand years. Um, it's not another 40 years, brethren. It's not another 30 years. You say, wait a second, you're saying it's that close? I'm saying it's that close. Okay, I'm 47 years old, and uh, if I live and I'm not killed by... All the people that would like to kill me <laughs> um, I'll see it in my lifetime the catching up first and then I'll be with the Lord and then I come back down glorified body but what I'm saying is I'm going to see these events that we're talking about here and if you're younger or whatever else most of my viewers you're going to see them as well a lot of you aren't going to die before this thing happens and if you die well then the dead in Christ shall rise first so if you are older in your 80s or 90s or something like that, uh, well, maybe you won't make it to the catching up. You won't be one of the ones that's alive, but absent from the body, present with the Lord, you'll go to see some neat things before the catching up happens. You'll be up there. Your soul will go up to be with the Lord, and you'll be up there in heaven with Him. And um, when the catching up happens, your body goes up first, and it will meet in the clouds. It'll be great. But uh, Isaiah chapter 2, let's go back there. And um, there have been some attempts here in the last 100 years to bring in a thousand-year kingdom, to bring in this, what the Lord has planned. And uh, many people know about uh, the Third Reich of the Nazis. And Reich, one of the ways that you can interpret that and, and translate that is kingdom. And the Nazis were basically trying to bring in a thousand-year kingdom. Why? Well, because they were Roman Catholics. Um, they signed a, you know, Pope Pius XII signed a concordat with uh, um, Franz von Papen, I think it was, uh, before the war began. And, and um, Mussolini was, you know, giving land to the Vatican and all kinds of things. There was a Roman Catholic crusade, is what World War II was all about. If you don't understand that, you could look into that a little bit more but they tried to make a thousand year reich thousand year kingdom hmm um, how about the united nations 
let's unite all the different nations and bring them all together. Uh, I don't know if they're ever, you know, they've probably some one of those nuts that's there at the United Nations in the last, since the 1940s. Um, you know, some of them, somebody's probably talked about a thousand year kingdom or a thousand years of peace or something else. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the research to find if somebody did or not. But the whole point is they're trying to bring all the nations together. Let's unite. Let's have a world government, a one world government, new world order, whatever you want to call it. This net zero 2050 thing, um, that's becoming a, a big thing with the whole climate change thing. Um, this climate change stuff, brethren, do not fall for it. Okay, it's a bunch of nonsense. Um, there's always been variation with, with weather patterns. Uh, that's how the Lord does things. Uh, the Lord would cause storms to hit and cause other things and whatever else. I mean, you read about some of the, the storms and things that would happen in the Bible and, and whatnot. Um, read about some in the past and things. <laughs> uh, it wasn't climate change. You know, and, and a bunch of SUVs and whatever else, and oh, we can we're destroying the Earth with our with our V8s or something. I mean, it's stupid. It's very stupid. Um, should people be a little bit smarter with how they drive their vehicles around and things and whatever else? You know, I drive a truck, you know, empty bed uh, truck all the time or something. Well, yeah, I'd be a little bit smarter there. You know, you wouldn't have to be in debt as much and things. Certainly. You know, but to say that man can somehow destroy the earth with his SUV or whatever, it's a bunch of nonsense. It's all about control. You know, and if you want proof, by the way, that the earth is not warming or whatever, cooling, or just listen to the weather radio. You know, here in, in America, to be the NOAA or whatever it is, um, I think is what they do there. Um, but listen to that. You can listen to little transistor radio. We have one at our off-grid property and we turn the thing on you can hear the guy you know the record high for today is such and such and the record low is su you know such and such and he, they tell you the date and a lot of times the record high is in the past and the record low is just a few years ago and then it'll switch other days and things and sometimes the record high is recently and sometimes the record low is when in the past <laughs> doesn't mean anything you know, but see, you can get the hype and the hysteria going that, oh, the earth is going to be destroyed and, uh, and people start getting scared. And well, we have to do something to lower carbon emissions and we have to drive electric vehicles around that cost $120,000. And how are you going to build these electric cars? Oh, that's right, with diesel earth moving equipment to mine the metals to make your cars. Hmm. And where are you getting these mines at again? Oh, that's right out of natural areas. So you have to destroy the earth to save the earth. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, and uh, thankfully there's some people that have enough sanity uh, that they can come out and they can talk against this Tesla stuff and all these other electric cars and we have to know more petroleum cars and all this stuff. And they got a thing over there and you know, England, I'm seeing where they have these people, no oil protesters or something, and they're going and they're throwing tomato juice on paintings and they're sp painting government buildings and they're gluing themselves to the street. <laughs> it's, just, it's insane. The whole thing, if you look who's behind it all, who's financing that whole movement, it's the World Economic Forum. You know, so, but, uh, you know, this whole thing, they want to kill off lots of people there's too many people they say so they have to kill a lot of people and they're going to have to reduce you know pollution and all this other stuff um it's kind of ironic because the bible says that that's what's going to happen but it's going to be god that does it hmm a third of all the people are slaughtered in one judgment just one um and the bible goes on to say about except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved you know, the Lord is actually going to supernaturally shorten that seven-year time period. Some of the days are going to be a little bit shorter than our current 24-hour day. Um, the Lord's going to do that to show that He has power over time and over the sun and the moon and the stars and everything else. Just fascinating the time that we're going into. But you get these crazy people and they're coming out and they're saying, Oh, net zero 2050. I'm not worried about net zero 2050. Okay, <laughs> not at all. I mean, I do believe that we have a few more years to go here on the earth. Um, I'd like to leave now and be called up now, but uh, I do believe that there are some things that have to happen. The building of the temple, 
in Jerusalem. I believe that that at least has to be getting underway or whatever else for the Antichrist to show up. They can't just do a little pop-up tent or something. I mean, three and a half years, you're not going to get much of a temple built. It would take a little bit longer than that. Um, the Mark of the Beast technology, they have to destroy cash, bring in the central bank digital currencies, that whole thing. Um, they have to do that. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of things. I talked about one of my other videos about, you know, some things that have to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble can get started. And so if we have the catching up right now, then you'd have to have a space of a few years between catching up with the body of Christ and the beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble which is a problem because what would people do for salvation in that time period? See, it doesn't work. So I believe that we're going to see those perilous times that shall come, people departing from the faith and, and whatever else, we which are alive and remain. Remain isn't really saying a whole lot for the body of Christ. It's kind of we found the remains here, you know. Did a study on that, which YouTube took down, so it's on Rumble, my uh, backup channel on Rumble. Um, but there's a lot of things that are written to Christians about the end times, the perilous times that come. So it's, uh, it's bad, but it's not really perilous right now. But it's going to be. Um, you say, well, I thought you said this is a, kind of meant to uplift people. Well, it is, because what we have to go through is not going to be that much time yet before the catching up, and then the time of Jacob's trouble, and then into the Millennial Kingdom. Um, God's agenda for 2050 is not like man's agenda for 2050. And I firmly believe that the Millennial Kingdom will be going, now what's the exact time period? I don't know. But I don't believe it's going to be 2060 or 2070 when the Millennial Kingdom is in full swing. I think it's going to be before that. But uh, let's read here. Um, well, I'll say a couple other things. Well, one other thing I want to mention here. I'm just looking at my notes. The fourth industrial revolution, that's another one that kind of ties in with, you know, this whole um, net zero 2050 thing. They want to do this fourth industrial revolution, the Klaus Schwab thing through the World Economic Forum, where they um, are going to merge man and machine. Well, again, you read the Bible, it's the mark of the beast. Okay, not very hard to figure that out. But they're making all these plans, these great plans for the future. All this will help you know, man out and all this other stuff. Um, it's just Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Kind of an interesting thing there. But the Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he, who's the he in context? God. He will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Jesus is ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. You say, well, how that, would that be the top of the mountains? That doesn't make any sense. Okay have a major contradiction there because Jerusalem is definitely not the top mountain in the world. That, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, if you read the book of Revelation, you would actually see that there's a great earthquake and all the mountains go down flat. So the way the Lord has this thing planned out, I believe all the mountain ranges, the Mount Everest and the Rocky Mountains and the Smoky Mountains down south and the Appalachian Mountains coming up through and Mount Katahdin over this way, the start of the Appalachian Trail, and Mount Fuji in Japan or whatever, all the different mountains are going to go flat and the mountain of the Lord will come up in Jerusalem. Interesting thing there. Verse 4, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Interesting. If you know anything about the <clears throat> United Nations building in New York City, they actually took part of verse 4 and they put it on what they call the Isaiah wall. I'll show a picture of it here. 
And you can actually see that they didn't quote the first part of verse 4, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. They just put their, you know, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. You know, and on down through. Interesting. And then they put this statue of this guy, and he's beating a sword into a, a plowshare. You know, he's, uh, we're, we're going to bring in world peace, and we're going to do it without Jesus Christ. I don't think so. Uh, no, you're not. I just, and again, you have to understand something. Satan, when he quotes scripture, and he does, in the New Testament, you'll see quote, Satan quoting scripture, he'll change it, or he'll twist parts, or he'll leave things out, or add things to it. Um, and his servants do the same thing. That's why all these new versions have come out to replace this beloved King James Bible right here. The new versions come out and they say, oh, well, that verse doesn't need to be in there. It's not in the oldest and best manuscripts. Oh, you mean the ones from the Vatican? Oh, let's not talk about that, uh, that nobody used. You know, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, if you want to get technical about it. Oh, uh, you know, yes, well, we don't need that in there, and, and this would be better translated and, and all this different stuff. It's because they serve their father, the devil, these scribes that do that. Okay, just to be very plain about that. And you can see that the servants of the devil at the United Nations that are planning this great future for everybody, um, they also don't quote all of the scriptures. They just quote part of verse 4. And then they make it look like we are going to bring this whole thing in. <laughs> they're not. I mean, I guess technically they are going to have a hand in it because they're going to be the ones that God destroys. They're bringing the, in the new world order that God is telling them to do so he can pour upon them his indignation all at once. Isaiah 11. Isaiah chapter 11. And this is one of the ones that you need to, if you're newly saved, if um, you don't understand about the millennial kingdom, I've seen some people in the comments and they say, just got saved. I really don't know what the future is. I'm, I'm trying to understand what's going on here. Well, this is what we're heading for. If you are truly born again, you've been you know, washed in the, blood, in the blood of the Lamb, you put your faith in what the Word of God says, you've come to the Lord broken, saying, I'm repenting here. I'm, I want to you know, turn from my old self-righteousness. God, I, I've messed up my life. I want help. Please make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. The whole thing, okay? You are born again. You're a new person, new man, new woman. If that's you, then this is what you have to look forward to for 1,000 years, and it's coming soon, okay? Like I said, most of us, it'll be in our lifetime. If you're a younger person, it will definitely be in your lifetime, and unless you get drafted or something in the future, go off to World War III in the Ukraine or whatever other theater of operations they have chosen. Ukraine and Taiwan is my guess where they're going to have the war <clears throat> primarily, maybe on American soil too. Isaiah chapter 11 and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. There's the seven spirits of God, by the way, if you read about it in the book of Revelation, Isaiah 11, verse 2. Verse 3, And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Um, how is Jesus in the book of Revelation chapter 19 says a sharp two-edged sword comes out of his mouth and he kills this Antichrist army, 200 million man army, kills him. How does that work out? What's it talking about? That's referring back to this right here. With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. His word is like a sword. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The book of Hebrews talks about that. So the Lord, he speaks. You know, the armies come together. All these Agenda 2050 guys, the Net Zero 2050 guys. And it's funny because they're actually on horseback because they have messed up this vehicle stuff so bad. Um you know, and it's it's interesting too because um, there was a book that came out 
uh, years ago, back in the 1970s, they did this big computer thing, guys from MIT and some of the other big Ivy League things. It was for the Club of Rome, and they came out and they said, when, at our current rate of use, when are we going to run out of resources? And you know the interesting thing? The year was 2040. And then they came out years later and they said, oh, we're, we're going to make this modernized and whatever else. We have newer computers, newer things and whatever else. Um, I think it was called The Limits to Growth. I think is what the name of this book was. And they came out years later and they did it again. And they came up with the same year, 2040, is when everything runs out. And there are some people out there that have theorized that the catching up of the body of Christ, what if it happens 2,000 years after Jesus rose from the dead? Jesus died when he was 33 years old, 33 and a half approximately. So 33 AD... 2,000 years later would be 2033. Now think about that. Now I'm not saying, I'm not teaching that as Bible doctrine, but it's an interesting theory. Think about that. If it's 2,000 years after Jesus Christ dies, buries, resurrected, he goes up to heaven, 2,000 years later, 2033, seven-year time of Jacob's trouble, you'd have 2040 is when everything runs out. Isn't that an interesting thing there? But this limits to growth thing, they came out of that years ago. Again, some of the most brilliant scholars out there and everything, and they're saying, yeah, 2040. It's not going past 2040. So, you know, these guys all come out there with all their plans and everything else. And, and uh, you know, and here's the weird thing about this whole deal. Right now, they're talking about a diesel shortage. We're going to run out of diesel here in November. Um, I think before the Monday before Thanksgiving or something like this, I've heard. And they're talking all about this and there's refineries burning down and there's food plants burning down and all this other bad stuff that could be coming and it could actually be real. I don't know. But if that comes, um, what kind of world are we going to have by the time of Jacob's trouble? By the time that that shows up? You know, it's going to be in, in just an incredibly insane thing. I mean, this, this whole thing of here in this area, the town of Patton, uh, Wolfton Resources wants to mine and they're going to try to mine for the minerals and metals and things that are needed for electric vehicles and for a lot of the other, you know, green technologies. Uh, the problem is that from what I've studied, it takes about seven to eight years to get a mine ready for operation and another 15 years for it to really be profitable. Um, 2022 plus 10 would be 2032 plus five would be 2037. That'd be right in the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's when they had the mine going? If the theory is correct, by the way. I don't think so. See, there, we're coming to a point here, brethren, and this is where it's exciting. Where all the plans and all the stuff that they've talked about, the, the big talkers in the media and the globalists and the World Economic Forum and everything else, they realize that their time is just about up. They don't even have 20 years. Think about that. We're that close. I firmly believe that we are that close. Um, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Stop there, by the way. It always said, wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The new versions, a lot of times, will change it to lion dwelling with the lamb. And then they come out and they say, oh, it's the Mandela effect. <laughs> and this thing has, has been changed. It's always said, the lion and the lamb would lay down together. No, that's actually the confusion that was brought in for the Vatican versions. I did a whole study. My wife and I did a whole study on the Mandela effect and all the satanic stuff that went in with it. It was a witch that came up with the whole thing and whatever else it's designed to deceive people people most people have a very short memory and so they come out and they say yeah remember it used to say this in the bible and it says you know wine skins it should be wine skins and the king james bible is changed to bottles you know and, and people go oh that's just amazing i mean somehow through the mandela effect this powerful witchcraft spell hit my bible and it changed the word in the bible and made the ink the same color and it didn't change the color of the page and oh they're so powerful that they caught no they're not they can't change your bible 
All right. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Jesus Christ said that. So if you believe in the Mandela effect, change in the word of God, um, then you believe that there's somebody out there more powerful than Jesus Christ uh, that can change his word when he said it's not going to be changed. All right. Don't fall for that Mandela effect stuff. So don't write in the comments, oh, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. It didn't say that in the past. Yes, it did. Okay, I have Bibles, King James Bibles up here that are 200 years old. And they say, wolf dwelling with the lamb, long before the Mandela effect thing happened. Well, they changed those too. Okay, now we're going into Nuttyville. Okay, somehow they can change it and get the white page looking white. And they can change this one up here in the 200-year-old paper. They get it to look exactly the same. I mean, yeah, you believe that? You have rocks for brains. There's no nice way for me to put it. Sorry, my apologies to the rocks out there. There are some very nice rocks out there in the world. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. I always talk to my son about that, and I say, you know, someday we go to be with the Lord and, and things. If you're saved, you're going to go there, and you'll get to play with wild animals. You know, so he won't be a little child anymore. But what I'm saying is, um, get to walk around with little an or with wild animals and things. You won't have to worry about any kind of wild animals attacking you or something. Verse seven: And the cow and the bear shall feed; their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Are they going to be something? And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the cockatrice den. Two different types of poisonous snakes, and they won't even hurt a child. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Such an amazing promise that we have there. Um, the whole earth is going to be uh, full of the knowledge of the Lord. Nobody's going to say, Oh, that Jesus stuff. Yeah, I don't want to hear about that. I don't, I, what is that? I don't even understand. Or it, everybody's going to know about the Lord. He's going to cut off all the names of the idols. He's going to destroy all false religion. It's going to be wonderful. And it's not that far off. So, when will the catching up happen? I don't know. I saw somebody in the comments said maybe 2025. There are some arguments for that. Uh, 2033, I've heard the arguments for that. And I think they're actually fairly good. Um, you say, well, the Bible says no man knoweth the day or the hour. Well, that's of the coming of the Son of Man in reference to the second coming. Okay, you say, well, that doesn't make sense because if the catching up happens, then you just go seven years out into the future, and there you go. Um, well, that doesn't work either because, you see, um, the days are shortened. And it says, no man knoweth the day or the hour. It doesn't say that no man knoweth the year. I've talked about that in other studies. Again, thousands of years to write it. You're not going to read this and understand it in five minutes takes a long time to understand all the arguments. And, and part of the thing that the Lord does with you, when you get saved, he will prove his word to you. And sometimes you will fall flat on your face. You'll get into a sword fight with somebody and you'll say, well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And you'll go this way and they'll go, yeah, well, what about this? Oh, and they'll poke you. Oh, man, oh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. And you'll have to go in, you'll have to research it and study it and everything else, and you'll heal that little wound there that you got from a sword cut. And the Bible talks about faithful are the wounds of a friend, you know. Um, sometimes your Bible-leaving brethren will wound you. They'll say some things that are offensive. Um, not me. No, I never offend anybody. I'm the most loved preacher. The beloved Brian, BB, is what I'm named. At. <laughs> I'll stop with that. Uh I will wound you. I will cut you with this sword sometimes. And I'll say, you shouldn't be working outside of the home there, woman. Bam! Like that. Why? The Bible says that. Keepers at home. Did the whole study on the thing of career women and whatever else. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. And you'll say, well, you know, but brother, we can't live that way. Nobody does this anymore. Then why is it in the Bible? And uh, put the Lord to the test. Lord, I want to live according to your word. Help me to live according to your word. I don't have much time left. I mean, if you are doing something contrary to what's written in the scriptures, 
husband and wife working outside of the home, well, the husband should, but I'm saying the wife working outside of the home, and you say, but brother, we, I need to think about our future. We need to think about this, and we need to think about that. We have all this stuff to do. Why don't you try to just spend the last few years that you have here doing it God's way? Make the sacrifices. We have one income, okay? Uh, we moved to an area where we can afford a place. We've lived without running water. We still don't have running water, okay? Uh, you make sacrifices. Why? Because, brethren, it's, I'm not going to worry about my retirement. Do you understand? I'm not going to say, you know, what am I going to do when I'm 87 years old and 40 years from now or something? And, you know, I don't have anything in it. I don't have a 401k and I, I didn't put, I don't have a pension or, you know, I don't really have any social security. I worked for a few years at an employer that paid in some of my money to socialist security. So, oh boy, I'm going to have a problem when I retire. I'm not going to retire, right? If you believe this book, brethren, then this book says it's going to happen soon. Israel has been reborn as a nation. It's not going to go another two or three hundred years. I mean, can you, even if we're way off, even if the nation of Israel is not God's real nation, it's been fake, it's a it's Rothschild created or something, which, oh yeah, God can't control the Rothschilds and tell them what to do, <laughs> whatever, but it's an Illuminati nation and it's not real in the whole deal. Okay, can you imagine this world being around for another 200 years with all the insanity and everything else that's going on? Man would destroy this world in less than 50 years. Uh, there's just no chance. I mean, we are, it's, right now, it's, I've said this many times, just bear with me. It's like a, a pot on a stove that's boiling and the lid's going clink, 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 and you see it, steam's coming out and there's little bits of water dripping out and hitting the burner. It's about ready to boil over and just blow the top and just chaos and death and all kinds of stuff. You can feel it. You can feel the hatred out there. It's real. But you're thinking about your retirement. You're thinking about, well, okay, I have I worked really hard. I went to college. I have this good career and I need to have this. And I, I can't trust the Lord. Do something for the Lord, brethren. And I don't mean to sell everything and go live on top of a hilltop someplace in a white robe looking up at the sky all the time. I'm not saying that either. Okay. Uh, but brethren, be encouraged. Understand for the widows out there, the widowers out there, the people that are in marriages that are bad, one saved and one lost, the people who have grandchildren that, won't, that are not allowed to be around you anymore because of your beliefs as a Christian. Um, the, the young people that have parents that uh, make fun of you, that uh, say that you're involved in a cult or whatever else, please understand how little time we have left. What if the catching up is in 2033? Do you realize that's 11 years? We're almost at the end of, I mean, we're November of 2022. Be 2023 here in another two months. 10 years? And that's really something to think about. I mean, I look back at my life as a married man. I was married in 2012, and it seems like a really long time from 2012 to 2022, where we're at right now. It's 10 years. And that's all we have left? If it would be 2033, and who knows? It could be sooner than that. It could be that they have plans that are advanced and Maybe the temple was built some other way, or I, I have no idea that things could get, you know, could speed up. I don't know. But uh, just there are certain promises that are in the scriptures uh, the promise of heaven, the promise of eternal life, and the promise of the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, if you want to call it that way. I get rebuke sometimes. Some guy said that the one time. The Bible doesn't technically say, you know, it doesn't say Trinity, and he said it doesn't technically say Millennial Kingdom. So you say Millennial Kingdom, so, and they get into all these little word games, whatever you want to call it, okay? The thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. Um, but that's written to encourage us. Um, Jesus Christ on the earth, his saints 
ruling and reigning with him. No more, oh great, here come the Jesuits. Oh, they're going to mess up and infiltrate and this thing. And the, oh, here come the Catholics walking down the street with their monstrance. And, and here's the Muslims coming through and they're doing their, oh, you know, the guy got his toe caught in the door, you know, called a prayer thing or whatever. Everybody goes, flops down to the east and worships the sun or whatever it is. You know, here's a guy with a red dot on his forehead. You know, he's Hindu, you know. Um, no, no, no. Jesus. All the world will be full of the knowledge of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to open up a adult bookstore down there. No, no. They were all burned down at the end of the time of Jacob's Trouble. Uh, what about the uh, adult club over there, the, the nightclub there? The, you know, no. Mm -mm. No, sorry. Uh, walk into the... I don't think there will be grocery stores, but, you know, people will be growing things. The agrarian life, you know, which is kind of funny because the real green, you know, thousand-year kingdom is going to be people growing things, agrarian life. I mean, it's just, it's going to be so amazing. Watch my studies on the millennial kingdom and you'll get all the scriptures for it. One thousand years. Hey, look, what, look, look how good the beets did this year. Oh wow! You you have to taste this this uh, wine that we made here. This new wine, oh man, it's really good stuff. Oh, did you see this this trout I caught, <laughs> or whatever? No airplanes flying over, no cars cruising by, no electric five G whatever stuff you want to get into there. No. Agrarian kingdom for one thousand years. Encourage yourself with that. I do sometimes. Sometimes it gets really rough. There are days it just, it's so bad. And I just think, oh, this world. I'm just, Lord, come on, please. Can we go home? You know, can, can you just kind of speed things up? And the Lord just says, you have work to do, Brian. There are still people that need to hear the gospel. There are still sermons that you need to do. Get back to work. You have a thousand years. A thousand year vacation coming up, brethren. Remember that one. Okay, um, well, brother, you know, I, we're not exactly living exact, you know, perfectly what the scriptures say, but we can't live that way. Nobody lives this way anymore, brother. What if I told you you just have 10 years left? Maybe less. Um, you have 10 years. Don't worry about your retirement. Um, uh, whatever you want to make it into, uh, you know. We have this big mortgage we're trying to pay off. Whenever we'll try to get out of debt, that's kind of an issue. But um, make some sacrifices. You don't have that much longer to go. Okay, We're at the very end of that time with the body of Christ on the earth. Very end of it. It's exciting to think about. But um, one of the ways that you can know that the Bible is true is by how much Satan tries to counterfeit things in it. So you see all the World Economic Forum and the United Nations and all this other stuff that we're doing on Agenda 2050 and 2030 and all these other things. It's because they're trying to counterfeit what God's going to do. Um, we want green technology. Um, God doesn't need green technology. Um, he has an agrarian life. And you know the funny thing? I've seen some of these big tech guys. I remember seeing John McAfee being interviewed the one time, you know, McAfee Security. And he said about, you know, if... If people, you know, if you don't want to be into this technology stuff in the future, you just be living in, in a cave someplace with, you know, animal hides or something on, wearing animal hides. I saw another guy from Time Magazine the one time, and he was talking about how to get away from technology, and he said, you could be one of these weird people that lives off grid, and he, he said, that's weird, you know. And they have these different Hollywood movies and whatever, and they're showing people that are just, you're out there, you're living like it was in the 1800s. Well, I like living like that, but... Um, the lost world, they can't stand the thought of the millennial kingdom. I mean, you get these millennials, <laughs> and they ask the, the younger generations, the, the cursed generation of the Antichrist, watch that study if you haven't seen it. They ask them, and they say, what don't you want to be when you grow up? And they're saying, almost all of them, I don't want to be a farmer. What an admission. <laughs> uh, they're admitting they don't want anything to do with what's coming. 
See, that's the wild part. You know, I used to, I grew up and I'd see all this end time stuff. You know, we watched the thief in the night, you know, at the church building I went to growing up and they, all these other end times movies, you know, that they had these kooky ideas back in the 1970s, you know, and I used to think about this time period coming and I'd think, oh, it's just going to be just normal. And then boom, rapture happens. And then everything gets bad from there. And everybody just kind of gets messed up from there. No, no. The people already have the mindset. A lot of the youths out there, they already have the mindset of taking the mark of the beast and hating what God's going to bring to this earth. So, and uh, it it's an interesting thing as well because you you would think if the devil's people, if they understand the timeline that God has here, you'd think that they would be really conserving their energy and whatever else and really conserving their stuff and just... we. We have to try to keep a hold of this. They're not. They're extremely wasteful. Uh, the Nord Stream pipelines. Well, just blow those up. A whole bunch of natural gas leaking out and everything into the ocean, bubbling up through the surface. Eh, well, whatever. They will blow up oil. They'll blow up all kinds of stuff. Well, let's burn this refinery down and let's make shortages happen. And They're not going to conserve what little they have. As we go into the time, into the future... You're going to see these globalist leaders doing things that will blow your mind, that these people will just blow things up and do stuff and false flag events and whatever else uh, to force people into what they want them to do. Um, but you remember, you remember the precious promises of this blessed book right here. And you say, I have a vacation coming up. It's going to last a thousand years going to go up to be with Jesus and we're going to have a reunion all of us saved people how long I would say probably 10 years maybe less till the catching up could go a little bit longer than that but I don't think it's going to be that long and then after that we're up there get to watch see what's happening down on the earth time of Jacob's trouble and it's time to come back down and the Lord comes back down, wipes out their army. 200 million men with just his words. Boom. God reveals himself to man. Comes back down and says, okay, now I'm going to establish my city on my holy mountain in Jerusalem. And for a thousand years, we're going to have a wonderful time. Can't even fathom it. I cannot fathom 1,000 years. I mean, my 47-year life seems like such a long time to me. Going back to my childhood, I don't even remember certain things and I'll have memories come back. Oh, that's right. I, yeah, I did go to that place. Uh, whatever. And some of you out there, some of you, my viewers are older than I am. And But, you know, think back over your life and then think about 1,000 years. I mean, even if you're close to 100 years old right now, you have 10 times as much time that we'll be spending on the earth together, ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. And it's not even 40, 50 years away. It's good stuff. So hopefully that's been an encouragement to you. Like I said, I'm going to be putting, here I'll do it this way. I'll stand over to the side and I'll say, here are the two videos on the Millennial Kingdom. I'll put the links right there and uh, watch those for all the scriptures that you want on the Millennial Kingdom, and um, you'll learn a lot as we go through the King James Bible, show you the scriptures. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.